There are a lot of studies looking at the use of immune checkpoint inhibitors in non-small cell lung cancer and both the neoadjuvant and adjuvant setting. So neoadjuvant before surgery, adjuvant after surgery. When we think about outcomes from those studies, you get neoadjuvant outcomes early because you can talk about, well, how does it impact the tumor at the time of surgery? And we have seen some positive results with neoadjuvant approaches over a few years with the first phase three data coming out just in um, earlier in 2021. But we don't have the patient meaningful outcomes yet from those studies as far as disease-free or overall survival. So we're waiting for those. It's interesting that those trials also almost, but I think they all conclude include an adjuvant component as well. So the Empower o and was the first trial that had a patient outcome, the disease-free survival outcome to read out. And it was purely adjuvant. And so when we're dealing with adjuvant, the theory is that though there's been surgery and there's been chemo, there's still a risk that there is residual disease around. And the hope was that by giving the immune checkpoint inhibitor in that setting for patients who did have residual disease, that that immune checkpoint inhibitor would stimulate an immune response and hopefully eradicate those cells. Um, All we can say so far is that the use of immune checkpoint inhibitor in that setting delayed return of tumor. Perhaps it also eradicated, but we have to follow a little bit longer before we can say that for sure. But everything is trending in a way that looks very hopeful for that to be seen. What we're going to need to do as all the other trials are reading out is trying to figure out, is there a difference by immune checkpoint inhibitor? At this point, there's no way to say that. We can just say that atezolizumab did hit its significance endpoint. Is there going to be a benefit to giving neoadjuvant treatment in addition to adjuvant with the idea that maybe you'll be priming the immune system to better recognize the tumor cells when there's more of them, which will lead to a more robust response later on. So there's a lot of theories there, um, but time is going to tell. And I think one of the, the big issues we have to think about is we certainly don't want to be subjecting patients who don't need additional treatment to additional treatment. So how do we figure out not just who's more likely to benefit in this case, tumors that express PDL one but who doesn't need treatment at all, meaning who's really been cured already. And that's where um, CTDNA and other technologies to look for minimal residual disease are going to be useful because we'd love to be able to, as a patient goes to surgery, determine whether they're already, like, you're one of the people who's already cured. You don't need anything additional or you just need chemo. Now you don't need anything additional or oh, there's still some cancer around. You need an immune checkpoint inhibitor um, and that's going to increase your chance of actually being cured. So there's a lot of research in, in that arena as well.